You're in the throes of learning Hebrew. Oh, You've yes. You've already learned Greek, so you're a master Just scholar. Totally nailed it. Yeah. It's <laughs> easy. Like once you learn it, you never forget you it. You never forget it. You never have to worry about trying to work on it and make it better. <laughs> What are you getting at here, Freddie? How hard is it to learn a new language, especially as an adult, I would you say. Know, as a, uh, you know, being where I am, I can say with confidence, it's hideously hard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I know, I feel like our girls can like memorize things and start to understand them so yeah. much faster. And I keep explaining <clears throat> things to them. You know, we've been trying to learn Latin over the last few years. Very, you know. Very slowly. Very I was just lamenting. Classical of us. <laughs> it's, it's what you do when you're doing the classical thing. I, uh, I was just lamenting with you my inability to remember things. <laughs> and, it's like, and you were like, is it because you're on your phone too much? And I was like, a hundred percent. That's what it is. It's we're used to just anyway. Our minds have not been trained. We're training ourselves to not have to retain stuff basically, but that's not the topic for today. The topic for today is how we can learn a new language and what language that is. We will let you know and we'll talk about it on the other side. <laughs> realize that we'll we title these episodes i know <laughs> okay as i was saying that i was like <laughs> they probably already know but like, yeah. i just needed a good lead in and not even that i didn't feel like i nailed well, it yeah, so. i'll give you a c yeah, minus yeah, it's fine <laughs> so we are the fierce fredericks yeah feeling especially fierce today <laughs> got my cold brew <laughs> it's ryan i'm selena we do the podcast, we do the videos, all the things fierce that we can. We haven't mentioned it in a while, but if you are just listening on this podcast, well, welcome to the audio side, <laughs> but you're missing so much. We actually don't have Sunny with us today because uh, she's with our our pseudo grandparents. Yes, our neighbors. Our neighbors are the sweetest so couple. She's, she's in within walking distance in case she just can't yeah. handle anything, uh, but she's also not here. Interrupting. Yeah. Which you, this is you the first know time that. ever. By hearing, yeah. but also a lot of times by seeing her. Hey, if cute you want face. to see her, you could watch her on YouTube. So but. go ahead and subscribe. There you go. <laughs> Aren't we a team? Um, but yeah, we also want to mention our patrons. We haven't mentioned them for the last few weeks, so we have a lot to mention. Thank you to these folks for jumping on board, mm -hmm. becoming part of the Fierce Fellowship. I said it's the Fierce Family last week, but I feel like Fierce Fellowship is yeah, so cool. It is. The Fierce Fellowship. It's, it's got the Fellowship Lord of the Rings. Of the Rings. Vibe. Yeah, I know. So we're just waffling. We're just going to keep waffling on that. Um, <laughs> so welcome to you. Angelica, Joseph and Caitlin, welcome. Allison P, Katrina H, Nilda, Daryl S, and Jason C, the newest members of the Fierce Fellowship. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> you will receive your commemorative. Welcome. You just welcome received just it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to join that, we would be honored. Yes. You go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. It's half of how our family is sustained. It's by the grace of God through you, lovely patrons. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Selena, you're going to teach us some something about language here something today. Something about language. So if you have seen the title, which I'm assuming you're going to keep the title, we're talking about learning the language of gratitude in marriage, because when you cannot talk well, <laughs> <laughs> talk good, talk good, when you can't talk good to each other and you begin even the internal monologue in your head when that starts going south. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about that because I don't have one of those. Okay. Well, and apparently for those of thing. us that do that are, when you think thoughts, do you not think thoughts of no. like, it's like a, it's, it's like, I feel the thoughts, but they're not, I, you don't, I, I think, don't think the thoughts, man, she's being frustrating right now or not man, she's slightest. really, you just say it and it's there. What no, is that's that why like? I have a hard time. What is that's that why? like? It's miserable when you're trying to talk, like when you're speaking in front of people, it's miserable because you're like, what am I going to say? I don't know. Anyway, I, so what, we, we won't go down that rabbit trail. Apparently that's a thing. Some people have inner monologues. Some people don't. I don't. But your, the point is, is you, what were you saying? I think <laughs> As a wife, it can be very easy to start stewing up things in your head, right? Especially during really busy seasons of life, uh, which we are currently in. And that's kind of where this topic Various, has yeah. come uh, full circle for us. We're like right in the middle of it all, friends. And we wanted to, we said, hey, you know what? We're going to share in our uh, lessons in grace here that the Lord has bestowed upon us. So mm. currently you are in full-time seminary. At Westminster, you sit on two school boards, uh, one for a local Christian school, one for our homeschool co-op. Mm. That's a classical, uh, I think, school in the making. Uh, <laughs> I'm teaching on Mondays, three classes, but we're there from 8 a.m. until mm. 4 with all four kids. Uh, we have a house, we have chores, we have extra family drama actually happening this season right now, even today. 
We are prepping for a conference. So pray for us. Our first conference ever. And we are so excited about these things. And, um, and we also, I'm, I'm running Fierce Marriage full time still. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that. I know. People always ask me stuff about Fierce Marriage and I'm like, I don't know. I just. We do it together. Yes. I show but up. <laughs> the, I am the buck stops with me. You are. You and so are. that is still very much alive and well. Also just got back from speaking at a men's conference. That was a whole other thing is that, the, yeah, this yeah. is kind of fed into our some of our pitfalls this last week that we'll share with you. It yeah. Is, so yeah. Life is hectic and you probably feel the same way. Fierce listener. It, I think it, we go through seasons in our marriages. Yes. Yes. It, and here's what the real, the realization we've had and that we're going to get into it more, but I don't think it's hell. It's like you have surges of activity surges mm-hmm. of, I don't like the, I don't like the word busyness. I feel like we overuse it. So like say, I'm just busy. Well, I, I want to be, I want to, I want life to be full. I don't want to be busy. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's just a little side nugget. But the point is we have surges of fullness. Yeah. Then you have the slow burn of, of, of the things you have to do. Right. And so the question we're always asking is, is this sustainable? If it's not sustainable, when's the end date? Yeah. And are we communicating through it? And are we actually recognizing that this is a, yeah. a season and not just giving over the reins and saying, nope, this is our life now, you know? Which is a little bit of what was happening, I feel like. Yes, absolutely. It was happening. So... All good things. We had a conversation last night, a little bit of a heated discussion. <laughs> we both had to repent. You Did you repent? Well, <laughs> Speak for yourself, Freddie. Okay. Well, we need to cut. We'll be right back. <laughs> but all good things that we... I don't know that your you season repented. Is, did I you? did say I was sorry. <laughs> I did. I even said it again today. I, re- I regret. I remember nothing. <laughs> You're remembering it wrong. <laughs> you are remembering it wrong. Clearly it was a big deal. So, well, it is if you are not repenting things. We had some more processing repent. we had to do today. <laughs> we did some more processing today. So. A good kind. How quickly <laughs> we can lose sight of what work is, of what the good things are in our lives, right? We can have a full life full of being on boards for schools and helping with our kids sports and being available and doing and working and all the things. But if we, if there's a big transition, if there's something externally happening, if there's just if it's starting to feel like you said, this feels like a lot. Um, I think there's pitfalls within that, that we can get into. And it's, it's, it can hurt our marriage. It can hurt mm-hmm. our unity. It starts chipping away at our covenant. Um, and you know, it really kind of starts the indicator for me at least is like, it starts in my head and then whatever's in my head starts coming out of my mouth. Right. And so like you said, so he was traveling. He was in Tennessee last week, um, Wednesday through Sunday. He came home, surprised us, Saturday night. Um, and then he had meetings Monday and Tuesday. And then I found out yesterday, which was Wednesday, that he had a meeting today for class and all that. And I didn't have the calendar. And I just, I was kind of at the end of my rope as far as like energy, emotional capacity, all the things. And I was just like, I just said, ugh. And he, he did not like the ugh. So we had to it's interpret. Not, that's, not, well, that's not what you said. Okay. You I'm said just, more things. I did. And that's it what was I frustrating. Like. Yes, it was very frustrating because uh, there was a lot of buildup to all of sure. this moment. <clears throat> we n- neither of us had really recognized. You recognized this was a season. You tell me that the season's coming, but like I'm in the midst, in the middle of like the mud, and I can't really see out there. I know it's coming, but for some reason, it still feels way out there, even though it's like that right our, here. That was the crux of our disagreement last yeah. night. Was I was like to use that analogy. For the the near past, I was like, hey, check it out, Selena. The winter's coming. Mm-hmm. Let's not get cold. Let's make sure and build a shelter. Okay, to be fair, though, I do this with you on many other things. So we both have our pitfalls. The difference in terms is, is of- I, if I get caught in the rain, I'm like, I'm wet. <laughs> You're like, why is it raining? <laughs> and I'm like... I, you know, we, this we is why the we're different. This is like, why oh, yeah, we're different. I'm, I, I'm wet because I didn't grab my umbrella, <laughs> even though my wife says she told me to. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because this is just embarrassing, but true. So we both admitted that we both have these like pin, pet pitfalls and tendencies about ourselves to not heed each other's warnings or, you know, forthcoming. You're saying I'm, this is coming. We need to do this. And we're so this is what happened this past week. I had kind of the last straw. You told me, um, I told you it's just kind of hard for me to to wrap my brain around anything that is out, outside of our normal day. <laughs> Both of us were physically, emotionally just drained. We were tired. It kind of just, when those attitudes and heart 
sort of orientation set in, it, it's causes me to start questioning. Okay. We made all the wrong decisions. <laughs> like maybe mm. we shouldn't do seminary. Maybe we shouldn't sit on these boards or you shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't do our co-op. Maybe we should not like, and that's always a red light. You never make big decisions in the middle of the what ifs, right? That's just, that's one on one, right? And I'm like, those ships are out to sea. They're already <laughs> gone. <laughs> and so I think what we, we came to understand is that and you, you reminded me of this is that like, you're like, I hear you kind of like grumbling. I hear you complaining. It doesn't sound like you're grateful. It, it, it's true. I had a wrong perspective. I mean, you're saying, you're saying all of these things are good things, which they are. They were wonderful things. And for me, I think I was just getting bogged down by the fact that I didn't feel like we were connecting. You know what I mean? And so I was like, I don't care what you're doing. If we're not connecting, like you could be saving people from dying. And I'm like, I don't care. You're not connected to me. Like, so there's something to be said for that connection, but there's also something to be said for me, recognizing like he's doing good work. He's saving lives. Right. <laughs> like, so, so to speak where, yeah. So where is the balance? These pitfalls of us falling into grumbling with each other, complaining, being ungrateful, just the wrong perspective. It just, if you follow that, you know, through, which has been a topic of our conversation and just, mm. If you keep grumbling, if you keep complaining, eventually it's just going to lead you to sin. You're going to be coveting other marriages, other lives. You're going to want the things that maybe you shouldn't be wanting at this time. Maybe mm. you want to just have ease and pleasure, or you just don't want to have to work hard. And the Lord is calling us to work and put our hands to the till and find the joy in that season. You can get frustrated. You can get bitter. You can feel bad for yourself. You can feel lonely, or you can say, you know what? This is a season we're going to gird up our loins. God's going to give us, he's already given us the strength. He is sufficient enough. Why are you laughing? Well, I will gird my loins. <laughs> okay. You gird your loins. <laughs> Just be clear. And so we don't need to lose hope, I guess is, is, is my overall, like we don't need to lose hope. And you just, you just reminded me that like, Let's, let's shift our perspective. So instead of me waking up thinking I'm tired, oh my gosh, I have another day. Here's the list. Here's the things. Also you, also our schedules. It's like, okay, here's the day. Thank you, Lord, that my babies are awake and they're healthy and they're happy. I'm so grateful for them. Oh, Louisa wants to help in the kitchen to make a mess. Thank you, God, that my <sighs> child wants to be near me. And that, you know, just, it just, it's that mm. change of perspective that comes through understanding and exercising this language of gratitude. <sighs> Wow. Um, so I'm, and that's the end of our, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, well, see you next week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. we'll, we'll talk about scripture, but yeah. So it's I'm, mainly I'm me. Just... A couple who's, who's stuck in the middle of this. So much of this is your marriage's immune response to whatever is on the horizon, right? You, you, as a couple, you develop an immune system where you know, kind of the, the, the attackers that are the common attackers. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you've had a past, which we have, where our imbalance in work life and church life and yeah. the decisions, the, the things we're committed to, the imbalance has damaged us in the mm -hmm. past. And I've not led well through that. And and so that's caused you to have some knee-jerk reactions now that are the result of mm. 15 years ago. Where was this <clears throat> talk last night? I was saving it for the podcast. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just processing it's in real true. time because I don't actually have inner monologues. I have to do it now. <laughs> no. Um, and so... The question is, how much of our response is that? I mean, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're seeing the dash lights go on. Yeah. You're knowing under the hood something needs to be looked at. Yeah. Um, maybe we're not heading in the right direction versus we just need to grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because what you and you alluded to it earlier when you said, I don't care if you're saving lives. If we're not connected, I want you home. Right. Well, I know that you literally you don't mean that. No. Like you would you would wrap your head around it. And so part of, and, and that's what you're talking about. Like you're doing good work. So at what point do we just realize, okay, there's an immature way to handle this mm -hmm. season and there's a mature way to handle it. Yeah. There's a spirit led way to handle it. There's a fleshly way to handle it. I'm not saying spirit led is always Selena, do what Ryan says to do or do what's the hardest thing or do whatever, like always fall on your sword. That's not necessarily no. spirit led, but there is a way to, ha to, to be mature about it and say, okay, how much of this is my flesh? I mean, I just don't like it. Yeah. And I don't want to walk in obedience in this season, which means I need to buck up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And how much of it is I am spirit led and I feel like this is leading to something very bad for our marriage. Right. How do you know what those indicators are? How do you know what those and, warnings are? And, and you can't possibly do that if you're not a prayerful person, mm -hmm. if you're not a person of the word, mm -hmm. if you're not humbling yourself before God. And if you're not a person. How that are you going to discern? what the spirit is saying and what the right. flesh is saying. Right. And if you're not a person who gathers with the saints on a regular basis, I would, I would add. So if you're not going to church, if you're isolated in the word, yeah. yeah and you're isolated. And you're, you're, sorry, I want to jump in nope. because 
And maybe the people that are actually speaking in your life is it's more social media feeds than mm. it is actual human beings. Uh, and they are really good at isolating you, making you feel like you are not good enough. And, really and good at drawing out the ingratitude in, yes, in your heart. Yes. Making you discontent. So um, this part of this conversation did come from our, our new communication book. So this is how a wife speaks. Um, chapter nine is actually called learning the language of gratitude. And it talks a little bit about my mm. own experience again, when we had our first child and kind of the season that we were walking through then and how I felt kind of alone and, you know, look at reading through Exodus 14 and how, you know, God is bringing the, uh, the Israelites out of Egypt. And so quickly they forget. So quickly they grumble. So soon after he mm. does miraculous mm -hmm things for them in front of them provides for them. And then it's just like, yeah, look at them, how terrible they are. And then the Lord just kind of, you know, <laughs> the Holy Spirit just nicely, gently reminds me that that is me. Like I am, we are the Israelites, right? We are constantly yeah. discontent, asking for things, looking for things. Like our heart is, con is always wandering. So in my Bible plan, I was reading Galatians 2, 9. He says, in recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas, and John, who are reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so that we might go to the Gentiles and, and they to the circumcised. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I also was eager to do. And the first part of this verse just struck me and recognizing the grace that had been given to me, mm. knowing who Paul was, knowing the grace that has been given to him. Ungratefulness and complaining could steal that from him. It really could like it could have it could have just stole the the grace and the goodness that he knew if Paul decided to be ungrateful, if Paul decided to complain about his life, right? Like mm. if Paul decided, and I, I don't want to give too much agency there. Like it's, it's Paul was transformed and changed by Christ. And this is, and this is the word of God. And this <clears throat> is the word of God. And penned by Paul, but inspired by the Holy spirit. And so it, it well, it, why is the Holy Spirit then well, leading Paul to say it in this way? Right. And and the verses before, and I should have read this too, Paul being called by God, he said, you know, and I was advanced in Juda Judaism, and but when God who had set me apart from my mother's womb and called me, this is chapter one, verse 15, uh, through his grace, he was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might proclaim him as good news among Gentiles. So again, I think we so easily as Christians just gloss over this fact that like the Lord has called us to what gratefulness he's called us to uh -huh. live under the grace and goodness of, of God himself. Like, and, go ahead. And well, this goes back to what we were saying earlier about how, how can you expect to understand the difference between uh, God, what we call holy discontent mm -hmm. and just plain old vanilla discontentment. Yeah. Right. Cause if you, if you're never before the face of God, reading the word of God, like walking in the spirit yeah. of God, praying, you know, to how do God, you filter through how that? are you yeah. ever going to know? Like, uh, God, you are, we are discontent right now for good reason, right? Because you're calling us somewhere and you're asking us to move in a new way. Right. And that, so that's been our experience in life is that there'll be times when there's discontentment and, right. but we, we're, but it's a holy discontentment in that we mm -hmm. are fine. If God doesn't change anything, we're content. In right. Him. Right. But we also know he's calling us in faith to step out right. and to do, you know, and I think the unholy discontentment is kind of marked by sinful behavior or like teetering on sin, right? Like it's yeah, driven by covetousness, right. driven by greed, driven pride. by pride, yeah. Yeah. Oof. Jealousy, those kinds of things. And so driven by even lust. Yeah. I mean, 100%. name a sin, right? Yeah. It can lead you to be discontent. A hundred percent. And they can, that will if you entertain it. It will become, it'll, be full, it'll, it'll materialize as complaining yeah, as you right. know, grumbling. Right. And how, how can we take agency in that again, by exercising gratitude in those situations and not, not complain, not grumble, not argue, like be obedient to God's word, even when we don't mm -hmm. feel like being obedient. Right. Let's read from uh, Philippians two. This is kind of the go-to verse about grumbling and complaining. Here it is. Or what's the version here? This is the ESV. So it says this, therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed. So now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you mm. both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Okay. That statement's not what we're talking about here, but right. this is gearing up for this. So yeah. Paul is saying to them, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because it's God who works through you both uh, to will and to work for his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the main thing is work out your faith yeah. with fear and trembling. Now he goes into the first, the next verse. There's a direct, direct correlation between 
how you complain and grumble and how you're working out your faith mm. or how you don't complain and grumble and how you're working out your faith. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. So verse 14, do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Mm-hmm. I believe Philippians is one of Paul's prison epistles. Mm-hmm. And so he's writing this, like saying like, hey, I could be poured out. I mean, I could be <laughs> right done for and run in such a way that I don't have to regret basically the time that we've spent together. Right. The t- and that has to do with what's coming out of you. Right. Is it gratefulness because of the thing that God's called you to? Or is it grumbling because you've lost sight of it already? Right. And how, I mean, how much of that is just the Christian life? I mean, the titles of chapter two is Christ's ex- example of humility. And then this part of the grumbling is like being lights in the world. Like we all have to face hard things. And wh- what is going to be, what is our response as a Christian? What should our response be? It should be one of gratitude. Like consider mm-hmm. it joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, that it will, the, Develop within you perseverance, strength, like all the things. And so yeah. the fire is not always bad. It's uncomfortable and we don't really like it all the time. But yeah. again, discerning if it's the fire of God that is <laughs> refining us, right? Mm-hmm. Then let's, let's embrace it. We talked about that last week and we how did. the fire, you know, fires are hot. So marriage is a fire mm-hmm. in a good way and it can either make you better or it can make you bitter and not to sound too trite with that. <laughs> Um, I but changed there it the is. vowels <laughs> and the vowel made it a different word and that's clever. It is. So we have to run through this really quickly of just, there's five pillars of encouragement. We'll just say, okay, five pillars of encouragement. If you are hmm. kind of feeling stuck and feeling grumbly, complainy, disconnected, frustrated in a season of busyness and here's what we're learning and here's what we would share with you. Number one, pray and seek the Lord. And then talk to your spouse. If you want to know more about like our, our season that we went through, get, get these books, look at chapter nine wives. These books, uh, uh, if you're not watching, sorry, how a husband <laughs> speaks, how a wife speaks. Right. Learn the, learn the language of gratitude. It is oh. absolutely a game changer and a life changer. There you go. So pray, get to a church. We've talked about this. If you don't have one, find one. You know, it, it was really hard for us to have one child and not have a community of believers around us. That was, I mm. think one of the hardest seasons for us. So, Don't be that yeah. person. Number three, recognize the season together as a couple. See, we have this really bad habit of just jumping into whatever is next on the calendar or whatever we're doing. Um, not actually taking the time to mark the time. Have We're going to have Sunday family meetings now. This is one of our takeaways. This from is our one recent- of our own personal takeaways. We're going to discuss things like calendars, yeah. upcoming events, not weekly, monthly ones, but like bigger ones. How we might have to divide and conquer on this. What it means to be what it means for us as a family, the yeses and the noes, why they will be what they be agreement on boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, again, prayer together with each other for each other. And then beginning and ending of seasons. Is this a beginning of a busy season or are, is this the, a big change that's going to be lasting for a while? And we need to grow into this. I want to speak to husbands directly on this for one minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of men for, for good reason, they're wired to be pioneers in one way or another. Mm-hmm. They're wired to maybe start a business or to go do something difficult I think that's what men Mm -hmm. are wired to do, Mm -hmm. to take a hill, so to speak. Well, if you married a woman, if you're you're listening to this, you probably did. (laughs) And you should. And you should. Find yourself a good woman. Uh, I did. (laughs) Uh, If you married somebody, you married a a woman, she's given her life to you and she's entrusting a lot of that stuff like for you to, you need to care for her. Well, it's not just the future that you're caring for. You need to care for her now. Yes. And so- a lot of times guys will go and say, Hey honey, we're going to take this hill. I need you to go with me and just trust me. And it's going to be, you know, long weeks. We're going to, I'm going to do 60, 80 hours a week. Uh, and blah, blah, blah. It says it's so important because it's going to be our future. It's going to be this big thing in the community. It's going to be whatever the thing is. And there's all these big grand reasons why. And your wife's saying, okay, well I can, I can, I'm with you. I can do that. Well, you need to give her a deadline. Not every season it deserves to go on indefinitely. There should be a, I'm speaking to the men here. Give, do your wife the, the, the service of saying, here's the deadline. I will work. It's going to be really hard for six months. Right. It's going to be really hard for a year. It's going to be really hard for the first two years, 
sweetie. I, and I, if, mm-hmm. if, it's, if it's not to a place where I can be, it can be less hard for us, mm-hmm. then I will make a decision and I will adjust. Right. And I think that is very assuring to the wife. A wife needs assurance. A wife needs to feel safe mm-hmm. and provided for like that. So when you say we're doing these great things, I'm like, that's great. But I, if I don't feel assured, if I don't feel safe, if I don't feel right. like we're connecting, then I, again, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It, it, I don't know. I don't, it's hard. I need to submit my flesh and I need to still mm-hmm. go up the hill without complaining and grumbling. <laughs> was, that, was that a grumble? How did that taste? <laughs> yeah. Coming like, out of your mouth <laughs> like vinegar. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, yeah, I think there's a call to both, right? We, we both need to grow last point here, um, before we wrap it up, cause we got to go find joy in your work together and lift your eyes. I don't get discouraged by the details. Don't get overwhelmed Mm. by the schedules. Use wisdom, exercise discernment, be on each other's side, be on each other's team, get each other's back, find the moments in between that that's what we're working on. There's moments, there's sh- little moments in between that you can connect little decisions that you're making small decisions, to micro decisions. That was two weeks ago, Go two or three weeks back. Look at micro decisions, micro yeah. choices and micro decisions that make a huge difference while yeah. we're learning that or applying that. I'll say, yeah. um, that's good. We are out of time. Let's yeah. go get the baby. Uh, let me pray for us. Uh, Father God, thank you for this. Thank you for your word that is always instructive. We pray that it lands in our hearts in a place that will bear fruit. Mm-hmm. And we hope that it, we pray that it lands in the hearts and minds of the husbands and wives watching, listening to this, that it would bear fruit in their life and in their marriage as well. You are the ultimate reason for gratitude. We give it all to you. Mm-hmm. We love you. In Jesus name. Amen. If you don't know the Lord, where do they, what, what, where should we start? Right. If you don't know the Lord, talk to a friend who does. Um, they will read the Bible with you, ask them to read the Bible with you, find a church that preaches out of the Bible. If you can, uh, if you don't know where to find the church, um, we have a website set up for you that will explain what the gospel means, but also it'll point you to uh, some good churches in your area. Lord willing. Uh, it's the news is good.com. Go check that out. All right. Um, one quick reminder, if you want to partner with us, go to fierce marriage.com slash partner. We would be honored and blessed by that either way. We're thankful we get to do this work and we will see you again in about seven days. So until next time, stay fierce.